What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and in this video we're going to be doing some prison cooking. We got 10 ramen noodles sitting in front of us right now so that could only mean one thing. We're going to be cooking up each one of these 10 individual ramen noodles in a completely different way to showcase 10 of about 1 million different ways that you can prepare a ramen noodle while in prison. You know, when you think about just how many different ways that you could prepare a ramen noodle while locked up, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. Uh, 38 million different 38 ways. 38 million different damn ways. Damn, there sure are a lot of options. But in this video, I've only chosen 10 different ways that you can prepare these ramen noodles. And each one of the ways that I've chosen for this video, I've done so for a specific reason. Whether it's an interesting way to prepare a ramen noodle, maybe a way that you never even imagined that you could, maybe it's got a crazy name, or maybe Maybe it's a means of survival. So again, I've carefully selected the 10 different ways that I'm going to show you how to prepare ramen noodles while in prison. And I do hope that you enjoy. With all of that being mentioned, let's go ahead and dive into the very first way that I'm going to show you how to prepare ramen noodles in prison. We don't need all 10 of these. We only need one. And this very first way that I'm going to show you is called fried noodles. So the first thing that we need to do when preparing our fried noodles is of course crush up these noodles inside of this bag. So we've got our ramen noodle crushed up and we've actually moved into the kitchen now. And in order to fry this ramen noodle we're going to need to put this in some sort of a bag. And we've got that right here with this popcorn bag. So we're going to open up this ramen noodle, put this inside of this popcorn bag, and then we're going to stick this in the microwave, and we're going to nuke this. Always make sure to take the seasoning pack out unless you really want to light your entire house on fire. And we're going to fold the end of this up. And we're going to kind of, kind of spread that soup out inside of this bag. And we're going to cook this for about one minute. But you have to be very careful while cooking this because if you let it cook for too long, you're gonna burn this soup. And you're gonna know it too because it's gonna be completely filled with smoke. It's gonna smell like the entire house is on fire. The fire department might show up. You might think you're getting swatted. You might have no idea what's going on, have a panic and anxiety attack at the very same time. So it is really important that you keep an eye on that soup while it's getting nuked. Soup getting nuked. Cody! Wait, you're right there filming. Cody, the auto-tunes. We'll just shake it up a little bit, put it right back in the microwave because we know it's going to take a little while. Clear. So with the soup in the microwave for the second time, we're going to not let it cook as long, maybe 30 seconds at a time, maybe 40 if we're feeling a little... Shit, I got to use a different word. If we're feeling a little brave, that was a little longer than 30 seconds, we weren't feeling brave. All right, let's go ahead and look at this. Now, be very careful because this is going to be smoking hot. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of this. It's not cooked enough yet. Back in the microwave. Clear! Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to cook these noodles until they're like a nice, toasty-looking brown. You don't want them too brown or too dark because that would mean that you burnt the noodles and then all this is for nothing. Because there's nothing worse, I can assure you, than eating a burnt ramen noodle. If you burn ramen noodles, you really need to take some cooking classes. I mean, how hard is it to cook a damn ramen noodle? Back in the microwave. We won't hit clear this time, we'll just hit start because we got 32 seconds left on the microwave. We've got a line of people behind us. Just imagine if we were in prison doing this. When you see a guy at a microwave frying ramen noodles and you're sitting back there and you're just trying to heat up your one single noodle, and there's three guys in front of you waiting to do the same damn thing, you might as well bring a book with you to the microwave because you're going to be there for a while. Or a Snickers if you can find one and you didn't find it on your pillow. Maybe you got it from commissary. I don't know. All right, carefully opening it. This is super hot. Oh, yeah. Now, if you can look inside that bag, Cody, I don't want you to burn the lens or anything. Can you see it? See that nice toasty brown? We're not done yet. We're feeling a little brave still. We're going to get these just a little more brown. This will be the last time this will be in the microwave. We'll only do it for 30 seconds. We need to move on to the next step of this frying the soup operation. We're about to do that right now. We got to hurry. We only have 30 seconds to do this. We're going to put our seasoning pack in here. La-da-da. -da. 
I'm gonna put just a little bit of water. That's all the water we want right there. Leave that right there. Hey, yo, you done in the microwave yet? You done in the microwave? You've been in there for three hours cooking one single ramen noodle. I'm done, man. It's yours. The microwave's yours. Look at that. So we've stirred up our seasoning pack with just that little bit of water, and now it's time for the magic. You ready? You can hear those noodles already sizzling in that water. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up. And that thing's gonna cook so fast, it's almost like a chemical reaction. You put those hot, toasty noodles in that water with that seasoning pack in there, and that sucker's just gonna start to swelling on up. Let's get a look at that right there. We've cooked this for about two or three minutes. Again, when you fry these noodles, you don't have to cook them that long. You can cook them longer. But this right here is the start of how you make Chinese food in prison. Let's go ahead and have a bite, see what this tastes like. Mmm. 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 That's so good right there. Cody, call the police department. I'm ready to go back to jail. Let's go ahead and move on to the next way. We're going to prepare us some prison ramen noodles. Cody, why didn't you tell me I got a ramen noodle stuck to my face? I could feel it. You know, when I was locked up, I told myself that once released, I would never eat another one of these again. I sometimes try to think how many ramen noodles I probably ate over the course of the seven years that I was locked up for, and I got to assure you, it was probably like 10,000. 10,000 ramen noodles. Maybe I'm a little off, but it sounds pretty close. The next way that we're going to prepare us a ramen noodle like we would do while locked up is we're going to prepare this dry. But Joe, why would you eat a dry ramen noodle? Well, I got to assure you, there's a lot of guys while locked up, myself included, who would do this. Now, when it comes to exactly why guys while locked up will eat these dry, maybe it's a quick and convenient snack. Maybe it makes it taste just a little bit different than those cooked ramen noodles that you make every single day. I mean, to be honest with you, eating dry ramen noodles, it's almost like eating chips, kind of, except they don't really taste like chips. But you kind of think of them as such. Crush up one single bag of ramen noodles. Let's go ahead and open that up carefully. Careful not to tear the bag because if you tear this bag any way but the right way and you go down the seam or it tears somewhere in the front, it's going to mess up the entire experience of eating a dry ramen noodle. Ain't nothing like trying to eat ramen noodles out of a bag that's tearing straight down the middle and you got dry ramen noodles falling all out between your fingers. It's just not a good experience. Let's go ahead and take out that seasoning pack. We don't want to add too much seasoning to this. Just a little. That's way too much, Joe. Way too much. Y'all gotta watch your blood pressure, Joe. So with a little bit of seasoning added to this, we're gonna carefully... Ooh, I'm just shaking up a ramen noodle. But with the contents mixed up correctly, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, that tastes nothing like chips at all. In fact, that's so dry. <laughs> My mouth feels like the Savannah Desert. Or is it the Sahara? Dry ramen noodles. Not the best way to eat them, but hey, if you ain't got no water for whatever reason, maybe you're in a dry cell, maybe the water's been cut off because they're about to do a shakedown, usually a telltale sign that a shakedown's coming when you can't flush the toilet or get any water out of your sink. But if you find yourself locked up in a situation where for whatever reason you have no running water and you just can't resist the urge to enjoy yourself a ramen noodle that you're probably eating 10,000 of throughout the entire course of the time you're locked up for, dry might be the way you gotta go. I had to come out of the hoodie. My blood pressure is already through the roof and we are only on the third different way that you can prepare ramen noodles while locked up. So with this third way, we're gonna go ahead and use the ramen noodle that we had from the second way because I don't wanna waste any. But this way we've talked about many times here on After Prison Show and this is what is referred to as the butt butterball naked ramen noodle. All this will consist of is that crushed up ramen noodle and a bowl with some water in it. Ramen noodle with that seasoning pack, add water. Let's go ahead and stick our bowl with our water in the microwave. I think we're gonna put this on nine minutes. You can't even hit nine. There is no express cook nine. Let's go ahead and put it on six minutes. So we've got this water heating up inside of the microwave right now and there's a few things that I wanna tell you in relation to eating a butt naked soup. One, anytime that you're in prison, you're waiting on the microwave, you're gonna see it all the time. 
Guys will be in that microwave cooking them either a butt naked soup or a soup just like a few of the ways we've got coming up in this video. And they will be taking so long in that microwave just to cook them one single ramen noodle soup. You could have a prison pizza. You could have a prison birthday cake that you're trying to hurry up and cook so that it rises and it doesn't fall all apart. And you've got this guy in the microwave ahead of you taking 25 minutes to cook one single ramen noodle damn soup. So we've let our butt naked soup cook for about five minutes now and it's done. It's ready to be eaten. This is just your basic ramen noodle. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than this. This is just you cooking a ramen noodle in the microwave with some water, but in prison, I have to assure you. This right here, this right here has probably one of the most unique names for a prison meal while locked up, as it's oftentimes referred to as a butt naked. Oh, oh, oh God, that's so hot! Come on, come on, The next way that I'm going to show you how to prepare ramen noodles in prison is oftentimes referred to as a cookie. Now, the crazy thing about a lot of these recipes that I'm showing you and a lot of these names and a lot of these different ways that you can prepare these ramen noodles here, in some cases, doesn't have anything to do with any extra ingredients. It's more so just based on how the ramen noodle is actually cooked. But in order to prepare this ramen noodle cookie, what we need to do is we've got our Tupperware bowl. We've got a little bit of water in it. Now, the water is absolutely critical for the ramen noodle cookie. You don't want too much water in this. We're gonna go ahead and take this bowl with this water in it, throw this in the microwave, and we're gonna nuke it. While we wait on that water to start boiling, we're gonna crush up the ramen noodle just as we've done with everything that we've prepared thus far. Now when crushing up the ramen noodle for the cookie, you really wanna try to crush up the ramen noodle to the best of your ability. Meaning that you don't leave any big chunks inside the bag. Now what we're also gonna do is we're gonna open it up after we've crushed it up. We're gonna put about half of the seasoning pouch inside the ramen noodles. Mix all that up together. Hey yo, how long are you gonna be in the microwave, man? You ain't got nothing but some water in there, man. It don't take 20 minutes to boil no water. You got that much water in your bowl. Come on, man, I'm trying to cook these prison nachos, man. I need the microwave. A lot of fights take place behind that microwave. Water's boiling. Let's go ahead and take that out. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our ramen noodles to that. So we had just barely enough water to cover the ramen noodles. We didn't even want to cover it. We don't want there to be any extra water in this bowl. Now what we're going to do, take our spoon, make sure all those ramen noodles get just a little wet. You guys are going to be really impressed with this one. First time I saw this, I was like, what the hell is that guy eating? Is he eating a, a rice patty? Or what do you call them things? A rice cookie? That's what it's going to kind of look like when it's done. Okay, with most of our water out of the bowl, there's not any extra water in there really. Now, we're going back in the microwave. And anytime you're in line waiting on the microwave and you're behind a guy who's making him a ramen noodle cookie, let me just tell you, you're better off trying to go get some water out of the sink to heat up your food because this guy, he's gonna be in this microwave for a while. This takes quite a few trips in the microwave, a lot of stirring, a lot of flipping, I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like making a pancake in the damn microwave. Even though that's really not a good way to explain it because a pancake, you can cook that relatively quickly. I can't emphasize to you enough that there is not much more aggravating than waiting on a line to a microwave while in prison. You got the phone you're gonna wait in line for, you got the shower you can wait in line for, the toilet you can wait in line for, but I'm telling you, the microwave, when a man is hungry while he's locked up and all he's trying to do is just heat up his food, and you got four guys in front of you all trying to make them a ramen noodle cookie, oh, my God, you might not get in the microwave till tomorrow. And they be watching their food while they locked up too. They ain't gonna let nobody get in front of them to that microwave. Hey, I got the microwave, man. You, you get next after them three people who are ahead of you. All right, this thing's really starting to take shape now. So what you can see is you can see how it's starting to, look at that, it's almost like a solid shape right there. Oh, oh, is that a cookie? It's not yet. I need 10 more minutes in the microwave. I gotta make sure this thing don't fall apart.
You'll have guys in prison who will treat these microwaves like they belong to them. Like it's their Cadillac out there on the street or something. They be shining the chrome on that thing. Let me shine these rims on that Cadillac. Whew, it's my microwave. I'm taking this home when I leave. State struck. The pure definition of the term. Meaning that while locked up, you believe everything in prison belongs to you. When really, it does not. It belongs to the state. Woo, look at that shine on that microwave right there. Look at that shine on that microwave. There she goes. See that? Look at that sucker right there. Woo, that's hot. Look at that little cookie what I made. A ramen noodle cookie. Look at that thing just bouncing around the bowl right there. I don't even know what to say about this. Again, the first time I saw this, I was like, what? How did you turn? How did you do that? How did you make a ramen noodle do that? Oh my God, that's lava hot. I mean, what do you think of that right there, Cody? Is that not impressive? Is that not like a work of science? It's something pretty interesting. We didn't put glue on this. We didn't put we didn't put tape on this. We didn't. There's nothing holding this together besides water and a seasoning pack. I mean, you saw it here. This literally belongs in like the Smithsonian. To be honest with you, this they should be building spaceships out of ramen noodles. Ramen noodle cookie. You seen it here first on After Prison Show. I mean, it's crunchy, too. Crunchy and chewy. The next way to prepare a ramen noodle in prison is referred to the hungry man or extra water. In fact, there's nothing special about this next way that we're preparing this ramen noodle aside from the fact that there is one extra ingredient. More water. Now, the reason guys will make ramen noodles this way while locked up is let's just say, for example, all you have is one single ramen noodle. Well, what kind of fills you up while locked up or anywhere when you're starving? Drinking lots of water. And that's something that guys will do when locked up. When dealing with hunger pains, maybe they don't even have any food. Maybe they're in the hole like I was, eating toothpaste and drinking cups of water. God, I don't ever want to go back. It happens, though. And again, this way that we're going to prepare this ramen noodle is referred to as extra water, a.k.a. the hungry man. That's a whole lot of water for one single ramen noodle. But when you're starving, huh, might not be enough. Let's go ahead and cook this for 13 minutes. 13 minutes later, our water still isn't even boiling yet. I'm kidding, it was only in there for like six minutes. Let's go ahead and add our ramen noodle to the water. Put that seasoning pack in there. Stir that sucker up. There's so much water, just doesn't do this one soup any justice. With that stirred up, let's go ahead and put the top on. Hopefully we don't blow the top off. We weren't filming when we blew the top off. I can't remember which one it was that we were doing, but it was so hot, we put the top on, the thing expanded and it blew up. It scared me to death, I almost had a heart attack. Almost wasn't here to film the rest of this video. Go ahead and let that cook. Cody, get a good look at that right there. I mean, look at, the, look at just the difference between the noodles right there and the amount of water. When you're in prison and you are starving, you don't have virtually anything in your locker, maybe two, three soups at the most, you're gonna reserve and keep those soups for when you are the hungriest. And when you're hungry, you're gonna make just what we're making right here, a hungry man, extra water, ramen noodle. The next way that I wanna show you how to prepare ramen noodles while locked up, this is a way that we did a very long time ago here on After Prison Show, and this is a way that has a pretty crazy name as well. This way is referred to as doo-doo balls. Oh my God, why would anybody wanna eat anything with a name doo-doo balls? But I have to tell you, this is a really tasty treat that you can make while locked up. Now with every way that we've made these noodles here in this video, we haven't been adding too much extra to these. However, I did want to include this way in this video because this is just a really unique way to prepare you some good old ramen. First thing we got to do is we got to crush up those ramen noodles. With our noodles nice and crushed up, let's go ahead and open the bag. Remove the seasoning pouch. We are not going to need that for this meal. We are, however, going to need our popcorn bag again. Put our ramen noodles inside that popcorn bag. We're going to do the same thing that we did when we were frying the noodles. We're going to fry the noodles. Put those in there for one minute. Let's get the other ingredients that we're going to need. A lot of people would refer to this as a cabinet. However, we refer to this as Joe's prison locker. Because everything up here, for the most part, is zoom zooms and wham whams. Your boy full up when it comes to the prison locker. I mean, I'm doing all right in prison. I really am. Got our peanut butter. We're going to need that. What else are we going to need? 
Hey, yo, what you looking at my locker for, man? I ain't got nothing for you. I ain't make commissary. Get, get out of my locker. Stop being nosy. That'll get you hurt in prison. Shake them up. Put them right back in the microwave for another minute, but we're only going to go for about 30 seconds or 45. We're also going to need us one single pink sugar or artificial sweetener, sweet and low, and one single pack of oatmeal, maple, and brown sugar. Very important to this recipe. 30 seconds later, back in the microwave for another 30 seconds. My microwave. Clean if I want to. That'll do it. We don't want to overcook them. Oh yeah, that's a nice golden color right there. Let's go ahead and dump that into our bowl. Those suckers are smoking. You throw that on somebody's face right there. Oh my God, they're gonna be crying. They're gonna be like, what? What? Why you throw that on me? Actually, they're probably gonna be saying nothing. They're gonna be screaming. Little bit of peanut butter, that's one scoop. Let's go ahead and put us one more scoop in there. Just like so. Now we gotta melt that, so we're gonna go ahead and throw that back in the microwave for about 30 seconds. All right, we got our peanut butter melted. Look at that melted peanut butter right there. That's some melted peanut butter goodness. All right, gotta move fast. Single sweet and low. Let's go ahead and throw that on there just like so. Single oatmeal pouch. Go ahead and throw that in there just like so. Cover her up. Make sure she's nice and tight. So you can see we're spinning this in a circular motion. Anytime you're locked up and you see this for the very first time, a guy is sitting there with his bowl and he's just spinning it right there in your face in a circular motion, you're gonna think you're about to have some problems. But just remember, if you ever see it, there's a good possibility he's only making doo-doo balls. Then again, on the other hand, you might be after a little something extra. Now you can see the circular motion has started to make the doo-doo balls. You see those things right there? Those, another thing that belongs in the Smithsonian. These are so good. If you've never tried these before, I highly encourage you to do so. And again, with more peanut butter, you'll make more doo-doo balls. Because you can see we only got us a few doo-doo balls in there. Just a few. The next way that I want to show you how guys prepare ramen noodles while locked up, this one is super interesting. Now, what we're going to be doing while preparing this ramen noodle, and the reason we're doing this, isn't so that we can eat this. This is actually for something else entirely. But just like all of these other ones, we're going to go ahead and crush up this ramen noodle, open up the bag, Take out the seasoning pouch. We ain't needing that because we're not eating this. And we're gonna also use our popcorn bag one last time. Throw our noodle in our bag. And this time, we're gonna fry these to the point that they burn. And there's a very important reason why guys will burn ramen noodles while locked up. And the reason for that is because when they do this, whenever you smell some burnt, super burnt ramen noodles, while you're serving time, that can only mean one of two things. One, this guy ain't never been locked up before and has no idea how to cook ramen noodles because how you gonna burn ramen noodles on accident? Or two, the more likely reason, guys will burn these ramen noodles in an effort to cover up the smell of smoke. Because you see, anytime guys are smoking inside of the housing units, it's gonna be hard to cover up and mask that smell. They may use baby powder, they may try to blow the smoke down the toilet because these toilets have that extra high velocity suction or they'll burn them some ramen noodles because I gotta assure you, there ain't nothing that you're gonna smell over top of some burnt soup coming out the microwave. Cody, you got the fire extinguisher on hand because these things will catch on fire. Now you notice we're not even checking on these noodles. We don't even care. In fact, the only way that we're gonna know when these noodles are done is when we begin to smell them. And believe me, they've been in there for about three minutes right now. We about to be smelling these things any minute now. You smell it? Here it comes. Oh, it's about to get bad. Okay, they're smoking. Oh my God, look at the microwave. Look at the microwave. Oh Jesus. Oh my God. Look 
at that. That right there, folks, is how you cover up the smell of smoke while you're locked up with a ramen noodle. We gotta get this outside immediately. We got a problem on our hands. Look at the smoke, I mean, it's like yellow. Oh, Jesus, the fire alarm's about to go off. God, this stinks. <laughs> I don't know where's a safe place to put this down because I don't want this bag to catch on fire. You can already see where it was already smoking. And can you see that? I mean, it really was. It was getting in there. <laughs> I don't know if it's safe in here. <laughs> yeah. If the house was on fire, we'd be dead by now because the fire alarm didn't even go off. Moving on, however, we're on to the next way that we're going to prepare ramen noodles. And this is what is referred to as a bag burrito. Just like so many other things that we've made in this video with the preparation of these soups. It's all in the preparation. No extra ingredients, just the ramen noodle that we're about to crush up, some water, and the seasoning. Now when crushing up the ramen noodle for the bag burrito, you want to be very careful not to puncture the bag. Because we're going to be preparing this ramen noodle burrito inside of this bag. In fact, that's why they call it a bag burrito. We're going to take us a little bit of water, just a little bit. My microwave is probably like, why are you doing this to me today? I have been running nonstop for three hours while you've been filming. Uh, we'll put this on for about two minutes. Go ahead and open up our bag. Take our seasoning pouch out. Add a little bit of seasoning to this. Just a little bit. Shake her on up. Okay, we're taking our water out of the microwave. You can see the steam coming off of that. That's super hot. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of water to this. Not a lot, but just a little bit. You gotta be very careful when doing this too because this bag is no type of protection from how hot that water is. Need more water. That'll do her. Oh God, that's hot. Oh my God, it's burning my fingertips. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to roll this sucker up just like so. Make her nice and tight. Nice and tight. And then we're going to let that sit right there for about five or ten minutes. You can see we're losing a little bit of leakage right there, but that's okay. So we'll let that sit for about five or ten minutes, and then we'll see what we got. Look at this little log we made. That there, folks, is what we call the bag burrito. You just ain't gonna wanna eat this side first because we can see we got a lot of seasoning right there. Mmm. You know, sometimes you ain't gonna have a lot to work with, and it's all gonna be in the preparation. I can't emphasize that enough. Different shapes, different textures, different amounts of water, sometimes no water, sometimes fires. There's a lot of things you can do with one single ramen noodle. We're down to the final two ways to prepare ramen noodles that I'm gonna be showing you about in this video. And this next way is a really interesting way as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up this ramen noodle. We haven't even crushed it up, oh my God. This is a recipe that you don't even gotta crush up the ramen noodle for. And the reason for that is because all we're gonna need is the seasoning pack inside of this. Put our ramen noodle off to the side. We're gonna take our Tupperware bowl Put us just a little bit of water in that. Let's go ahead and heat this up. And what we're making is some chicken broth. Now this may sound stupid, it may sound crazy, but I have to assure you, this had to make the cut. And the reason for that is because I can't tell you how many times I've been sick in prison when I can't get the medical or I fill out a medical request form and it takes them a week to see me. Maybe they're backed up. Maybe it just takes a while for whatever reason. But when you're sick, and I mean you're shivering, you've got a fever, you've got the flu, you feel bad while in prison, being able to make you some sort of a home remedy really can go a long ways to helping you feel at least somewhat better or at least a little more. I don't even know what the good word for it is. But again, this chicken seasoning pouch, 
with some hot water coming out of the microwave, putting that into a cup, and being able to drink that when you've got the flu, it might not make you any less sick, but it will definitely help you feel at least a little bit better. Get our hot water out of the microwave. Got some steam coming off that sucker. Put us a little bit of that chicken seasoning in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Stir that up. And again, like I said, when you're sick, sometimes while locked up, this might be the only thing that you can get your hands on. Just try not to walk around drinking this in front of a lot of people because they might think you got some issues. Joe, what you drinking, man? What? Hey, yo, what you got in that cup, Joe? That don't look right. You get that out the bathroom? <laughs> you got to just feel bad. <laughs> I'm so sick. I'm so sick. I'm not drinking this. This, this is boiling hot. We've reached the final way to prepare ramen noodles while locked up that I'm going to be telling you about in this video. Again, there's a hell of a lot more ways that you can prepare one of these while serving time that didn't make this video. But I did, however, just want to share with you 10 ways that I felt were really interesting and deserved to be mentioned in this video. For this last and final way, we've got our bowl in the microwave right now with the water in it. We're heating that up. We're going to crush up our ramen noodles. We'll be putting that in that bowl when it comes out. But we need one final ingredient for this meal. Now this is something that might be kind of surprising to know that you can get your hands on relatively easy while locked up. And what that final ingredient is... Hey yo, what you doing in my locker, man? Why are you looking at me? Y'all be in my locker too. Y'all nosy. I'm trying to see what I got in my locker. I just broke something. It's an egg. Now you'll get these from the chow hall, whether it comes as a hard boiled egg for breakfast, maybe you get you uh, uh, some scrambled eggs. Eggs are usually served a few different ways while locked up. So getting your hands on an egg, it's really not that hard of a thing to do. Now we are using a raw egg for this meal and that's okay. These are also something that's not too hard to get your hands on as guys who work in the kitchen oftentimes will bring these back to the housing unit and don't ask me how they do so. But you'll be able to get your hands on these pretty easily while locked up and adding one of these to a ramen noodle can help enhance that single butt naked that you would otherwise be eating. Let's go ahead and get this scalding hot water out the microwave. Let's go ahead and add that ramen noodle in there just like so. Go ahead and add that little bit of seasoning. Stir that money up. Now we're going to let this sit for a little while with the lid on it. That way it'll absorb some of that extra water. Then we'll go ahead and put that egg in there raw and put that back in the microwave and cook it. So we've let this sit up for just a little while. We're gonna go ahead and take the lid off of this. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but we're gonna break this egg. We're gonna throw that egg right up inside of that noodle. Check that out right there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna scramble this egg inside of this noodle. Now don't knock this until you try it. If you've never tried this before, this may seem a little crazy. I'm trying to tell you though, you ain't had nothing until you had you some scrambled eggs inside of a ramen noodle. Now this is going to take a little while to cook. We're going to put this on three minutes and we're going to let this do what it do. And that is scrambled eggs ramen noodles. Now this is a more tasty meal if you add things to it like cheese, some sausage, anything else that you can get your hands on. But you can eat this just like this. And not only is it relatively good, it'll also fill you up. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know which one of these ramen noodle preparations you enjoyed the most. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!